A day of reckoning is coming for all kinds of car makers, especially as the transition to EVs is at hand. Maybe not so much in some countries, but globally for sure. And Ford is one such company that appears to be making the big steps necessary to try and get their ship in order before the storm hits. I'm joined today by Herbert from Brighter to discuss this very important topic. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Herbert, thank you for joining me. You've got your finger on the pulse, and uh, we need to find out if Ford is flatlining. So let's take a look here. Uh, did you know mass assembly of the new all-electric Explorer starts at their assembly plant in Cologne, Germany? They're making, not just going to make, but are making the all-new uh, electric Ford Explorer at its dedicated $2 billion facility there. Have you heard about this? Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, I just heard about it. But um, what I heard, uh, I also just watched an interview of Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, and he said a couple very interesting things. First, he said that 50% of people, it's affordable for them to buy an electric vehicle. And then he said that the people who buy a Ford Mach-E or a Ford Lightning, they don't go back to buy a gas car. So at this point, they know that they need to be doing building more cars like this. I have seen people who bought an electric car who didn't have the greatest experience. In a lot of cases, it was either one car in specific or it was um, or it was one model in specific. I knew people who bought the Nissan Leaf who, as much as they loved it, said, this is just not workable. I need more yeah. than 80 miles of range from that first generation. And that's something I can absolutely agree with. Now, if you look at something more like the Mach-E or the Lightning, those are compelling products. The only question comes down to, does the price make sense? And what it sounds like Jim is saying is that, at least in Europe, the price does absolutely make sense. Um, so how do you prove to people that this is a seat worth getting your butt in for the first time. <laughs> and and one way you can do that is with demonstrators. The nice. F-150 Lightning Super Truck for Pikes Peak is one hell of a demonstrator. And look at this thing. It's a beast. <laughs> now, how many parts in common does this actually have with a Lightning? It doesn't matter. When you look at those drift cars, Ford has famously <laughs> sponsored Things like Ken Block's uh, drift cars, Ken Block, rest yeah. in peace, lost before his time. It'll have some DNA in common, but for the most part, this is a from the ground up build. And is yeah. this, the only reason this won't crush Pike's Peak is if the weather doesn't cooperate. Because you take, you take something like the Model 3 or the Plaid, and then you give it to a small shop with a limited budget, and they still crush it. This is not a small shop with a limited budget. This is the manufacturer themselves with an army of engineers and a quasi unlimited budget. Yeah. It's got thousands of pounds of downforce. They broke records with their Supervan 4.2 with 1400 horsepower. Uh, yes, yeah, 6,000 pounds. Where's the downforce. Supervan? This is called a super truck, right? Where's well, the Supervan? The Supervan yeah. was last year. Okay, gotcha. It was last year. So this is going to be exciting, and people will be watching this. Boy, to call this a truck, though, is kind of a stretch. But when you look at those custom-built drift cars, they'll say, oh, this is the new Ford Focus drift car. And then you see inside of it, and it's all space-age tubes, and there's very little in common with a street car at that point. But it doesn't have to be. This is supposed to be fun. Yeah. This uh, interview that I listened, uh, the same interview I was just speaking about earlier where Ford CEO Jim Farley was interviewed, you know, when he was asked the question, right, what is a Ford and is it a, you know, is it you guys consider yourself an AI company? And the way he answered is very much it's a brand, right? And we are about the product that the customer, it's all about what the customer will feel and experience using that product. So, you know, doing things like this is very critical for Ford, right? They have a brand. They have a very powerful brand and they need to give you that feeling of what it is to own the Ford. Um, if you try to compare them to specs and price and all that, they will lose. And they know that that's the case right now. They can't build the best product. They don't have the best tech. And so he downplays it. You know, he goes, we're not just a toaster on wheels. <laughs> 
And <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, We're not going to we get a toaster. toaster. <laughs> but, uh, but so, you know, doing things like this where he has a super truck, right? First of all, great name, super van, super trucks. Um, and then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he did, right? Just make it as outlandish as possible. Say that it has these incredible uh, capabilities. But people who buy the Ford needs to have that brand feeling of what, the emotional connection with the product. That's the way that they're going to win this game and they know it. And so that's, you know, he, he was pretty, he was pretty honest. He was pretty straightforward saying things like, you know, well, well, you know, I mean, he tried to pitch that we have AI built all over our cars. We can do all these kinds of ADAS. He goes, even if we can't do RoboTaxi in the future, at least we still have these kind of tech um, in now. So Ab Absolutely. And it's important. The brand is valuable. There are people who will love it. And when you look at these demonstrator vehicles, uh, it is a custom built race car with a shell that kind of looks like a truck. It's not, it's not a truck. There's very little in common. It might use the same battery and motors because those are probably the most advanced ones Ford has. Um, and it might be using their next generation of ones. So if we look at how things are actually going on the ground, ignore the percentages because, mm -hmm. you know, electric vehicles sales are up 64%, yeah. uh, but up 64% from 5,000, not as exciting. If you look a year ago, 5,000 total electric vehicle sales for the month of May, mm -hmm. Cybertruck alone is getting close to that. Model 3 and Y are higher than that. It's a step in the right direction, but it is just a step. If we go down here, we'll see the Mach-E sales actually up. So eight, 9,000, pretty good. And then, yeah, getting down to the Mach-E, 4,200, 1,000 a week. That's respectable. That's where the mm -hmm. Model S was not that long ago when it was the only car they were selling except yes. you and yes. i just did a show we covered cybertruck and cybertruck today is now at a thousand a week so they're probably around four thousand a month and this is exactly what mustang mach -E is now at but mustang mach -E has probably two-year lead so at this point this should have been they should have been a lot higher by now should have been sorted out and underway and 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 really moving but um Ford does have a Skunk Works program they, where they are trying to develop the next generation. Looking through the Lightning forums, the Mach-E forums, I've seen a lot of people saying, I do love my car. I hope to get another one, but I really want to see what their next generation vehicle is. When I was at Fully Charged in Vancouver last year, I went to the Ford booth and they had the all new 2024 Mach-E. And I said, very cool. What's changed? And the guy said, changed? like oh no oh no not only are you not making changes every month every week every day you're not making them every year that's mm -hmm. not ideal but the silver lining is that that engineering time is is not being thrown out it is being dedicated to focusing on the next big thing which hopefully is mm -hmm. yeah i'm actually okay with that right because uh, the most important thing for to for right now is gross sales but more importantly profitability and so yeah. you know what they don't they shouldn't be trying to add new features they should just try to mass produce what they've built now improve that lower the cost of what they're building now and get it um, stabilized otherwise none of this matters right they're going to need he was asked this question in the interview like you know you guys are losing billions five to billion dollars how much more could you stomach and continue on and he said, you know, I think the general answer was, this is the future. We understand this is the future. I wouldn't be doing this, he said, if I didn't see a path to, profit, to profitability. So great answers. I, I just still find, I still find him. I still like Jim Farley. I think that when I listen to him, I do feel like he's being truthful. He certainly does bend the truth a little bit, but it's understandable versus, you know, the other CEOs of other automakers who, you know, they're just completely saying things that are absolutely not even close to being true and they can try to say with a, a straight face when gm came out with their big announcement what <laughs> two years ago now we're changing the game we're doing everything we are rev are we going to revolution i made a video it was called is gm revolutionizing evs and the thumbnail just said no because <laughs> they're i looked at it and i said this is all how are they not getting an SEC lawsuit brought against them? Because this is yeah. a work of fiction.
I do not find Jim Farley to be as uh, questionable as some of yeah. the other CEOs, especially there are a number of uh, foreign brands, yeah. especially smaller foreign brands, where they are living on fairy dust. There's, what, there's what Ford has going for them, and and you can hear Jim Farley repeat this over and over and over again. Is that we're number two in electric vehicles in the U.S. Mm. We're far away from Tesla, but we're number two. And he was very proud uh, in this interview talking about how they're the leading manufacturer partnership with Tesla to create the most number of adapters for the supercharger network because he said we're number two. And so that is a good, you know, hang hat to hang at this point is uh, let's, let's try to stay number two. Let's keep growing this. And so I do have hopes that they take chart, you know, stop the bleeding. Uh, they've got great cars. And they just need to somehow right the ship, right? Second place is going to be a tough position to hold. Kia has, uh, mm -hmm. Kia Hyundai has a factory going up in the South. Uh, Volvo, I think, just opened their factory in the U.S. where they will be making electric cars. Those are all going to qualify uh, for at least some credits in some places, if not all credits in all mm -hmm. places. And it's going to be a tough race. There's a lot of players who are, behaving seriously for the first time ever. And it's exciting. Uh, so guys in the comments, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? How do you feel about Ford? Have you driven a Ford lately? Uh, leave it in them comments below and everybody else like subscribe, smash your thumbs if you got to and uh, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots, perhaps each Wednesday at 11 a.m. when we are live together simulcast on our channels. Check it out.